On Tesla's battery day, many investors were disappointed by the facts that there was no quote-unquote groundbreaking battery technology, resulting in a 10% decline on Tesla stock after battery day. Yet while many investors were disappointed, they missed the entire point of the presentation. Elon Musk doesn't have the time to present Tesla's technology in a hyped up way that appeals to the majority of the audience. After all, there's no reason to. As Elon likes to say, advertising is the last priority for Tesla, and the first priority is to make a product that sells itself. My premise is never to try to convince people why they should invest in Tesla. Sell your stock. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Tesla could have made a hyped up presentation like Lucid Motors, an up and coming electric vehicle manufacturer, but that's not the point of the presentation. Elon Musk even stated himself that I wasn't trying to convince people that much. The results will speak for themselves. As famous engineer Sandy Monroe says, Tesla always lies. They always underestimate and present without much excitement and battery day is no different. In this video, I'm going to go over how Tesla lied and why you should be very excited at the results we saw at Tesla's battery day. Welcome to Kaz Gains Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. Elon Musk and Drew Baglino, the two men who were presenting at Tesla's battery day, constantly emphasized the facts that everything presented on that day was two years out. This aspect alone caused the audience to be very disappointed. After all, weren't we supposed to see the groundbreaking technology? Well, the answer to that question is yes. The press coverage of this event was sad. Okay, tell me why. Most of the press takeaway was... No battery. A sad reflection of their understanding, really. When Lucid Motors, an up-and-coming electric vehicle manufacturer, revealed their new vehicle, the Lucid Air, everyone was shocked at how fantastic Lucid's prototype vehicle was. Now this is not to bash Lucid at all, but prototypes are the easiest part in creating EVs. We've seen electric vehicle manufacturers like Faraday Future and Volkswagen create enticing prototypes but fail to scale up manufacturing. While these prototypes are great, Scaling is the most difficult part, and Elon's emphasis on this on battery day caused the mainstream media's reaction to be negative. Contrary to popular belief, Tesla's new battery is already here and is not two years out. Tesla has already been producing thousands of its Roadrunner batteries right in its Fremont factory, and that's not something Elon plans to do in the next two years. It's actually here. We have produced the cells we're talking about. We've produced many of them. Mm -hmm. We have we have had cars driving with those cells since May. Take a look at an important tweet Elon stated one day after Tesla's battery day. When replying to a tweet that stated, just listen to Sandy, Elon stated, yes. This is what Sandy Monroe said that day. Well, he said something yesterday that really uh, drove home uh, the point. Anybody can make a prototype. Manufacturing is hard. He said it like three, four, five times. This one, this is manufactured. This is, uh, this is something that He's got prototypes uh, working and, and he's scaling up. He's, he's got that, uh, that little plant uh, next to Fremont. Uh. What Sandy stated there is extremely important. Almost every week, we hear about a new quote unquote battery breakthrough that has an extremely high energy density. Yet, these batteries are not able to be manufactured in mass. Tesla's pilot production line in its Fremont factory has an estimated output of 92,800 megawatt hours per year. This is equal to 92.8 gigawatt hours, almost three times larger than the output of Tesla's Gigafactory 1. This is what Elon Musk meant by Terra is the new Giga. The fact that Tesla's pilot production line is able to efficiently manufacture over three times more batteries than the Gigafactory 1 is astonishing. I really can't emphasize this enough. Tesla's prototype line is literally manufacturing three times more batteries than the Gigafactory 1. Of course, the prototype isn't actually that small of a space as the Roadrunner facility has a footprint of over 157,000 square feet. On the other hand, Tesla's Gigafactory 1 has a footprint of 1.9 million square feet, over 10 times larger than the Roadrunner facility while manufacturing less battery capacity. This puts Tesla on track to manufacture millions of Cybertrucks in its Texas Terra factory. With less space, the Texas Terra factory will be manufacturing 10 times more battery capacity than the Gigafactory 1. Elon Musk didn't sound very excited when he presented the breakthrough, and that's why the reaction between Wall Street and Tesla followers is so drastically different. Essentially, what this translates to, based on what we know today, is about a 75% reduction uh, in the investment per kilowatt hour, uh, or gigawatt hour. It's, it's just uh, basically four times better than the current state of the art to the best of our knowledge. Elon Musk was casually rambling these absolute game-changing numbers like it was nothing. 
Tesla's Texas Gigafactory is 4 times cheaper and produces 10 times the output. That's revolutionary from a marginal standpoint. Many will say that Tesla's battery really wasn't that groundbreaking, when the truth is that the improvement was massive and understated in a very unenthusiastic manner. This is what I mean by the statement Tesla lied to you. For example, I'm sure many of you missed this detail that was rambled off and not emphasized at all. The time for electric vehicle supercharging has remained the same despite the increase in diameter on the battery. Tesla's new battery will be able to charge 300 miles in 20 minutes, which is extremely fast given that other automakers would typically have to take hours to charge a battery of the same size. To a normal person, this means nothing, but to the battery world, this is revolutionary. I'm also not trying to convince people that much. The results will speak for themselves. Additionally, another factor that wasn't presented that enthusiastically, but should have been, was the range increase. The Plaid Model S has a 520 mile range, but that's not the part that you should be looking at. A factor that many aren't realizing is that the Plaid Model S is not designed to have a long range. Performance vehicles are designed to have a faster acceleration, not range. For example, the Tesla Model 3 performance version has a driving range of 299 miles, whereas the long range version, despite costing $8,000 less, has a driving range of 322 miles. Contrary to what the majority of the audience was looking at, the exact number we need to look at is the 54% range increase that was shown on battery day. If we apply this range increase to the long range Tesla Model S, this results in a 620 mile range. Just imagine how revolutionary this is. Despite this, it was somehow dismissed by Wall Street. If Tesla put the new battery in the long range Tesla Model 3, the vehicle would have a range of 495 miles. This was the type of range increase that Wall Street was looking for, but it was certainly not presented in the manner that people were looking for. Not only that, but despite the range increase, the battery still costs 56% less. The Tesla Model 3 has a battery pack size of 75 kilowatt hours, and according to Forbes, costs $127 per kilowatt hour to manufacture. In total, this means that a Model 3's battery pack costs $9,525 to produce. If we apply a 56% cost reduction, this battery pack will cost $4,191 to manufacture. That right there is a $5,300 price drop. So basically, Tesla is saying that if this battery was in the Model 3, I could purchase a long range Model 3 with almost 500 miles of range for $35,000. Now it takes time for Tesla to scale and they won't use the battery in the Model 3. Instead, the company will use it in the Semi, Plaid Model S, Cybertruck, and Roadster. The fact that Tesla didn't update those vehicles makes the announcement not as exciting, but the reality is that the range just increased by 54% while costing 56% less. Many will say that Tesla's battery day did not go above and beyond. There were no shocking announcements. The truth is, however, that Tesla made a shocking announcement that was subtle but revolutionary. The announcement that I'm talking about is Tesla's plan to vertically integrate into lithium mining. For the average Joe, this sounds extremely boring. However, Tesla's move to get into mining was not one that was made out of ignorance. Elon Musk and Tesla's team have found a new and more efficient way to mine lithium, one that nobody has ever done before. This isn't something that will happen 5 years from now. This is something that is happening right now. Tesla has purchased over 10,000 acres of land in Nevada to execute its new sulfate-free mining procedure. This will decrease lithium costs by roughly 33%. Of course, this wasn't announced that enthusiastically, because Elon's goal is not to advertise, but rather to manufacture an enticing product. Uh, but it, it is important to say like, okay, what is the smartest way to uh, take the ore and uh, extract the lithium and, and do so in an environmentally friendly way? Uh, we can actually use table salt, uh, sodium chloride, uh, to uh, basically ex extract the lithium from the ore. Um, and we actually uh, uh, we, 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 we actually got uh, rights to a, a lithium clay deposit in Nevada. Um, over 10,000 acres. Over 10,000 acres. Tesla's entrance into lithium mining is a warning to other mining companies that if they don't mine enough material, then Tesla will enter the business and disrupt them. This is not something to overlook. It is a key factor that will drive negotiations with mining companies in the future. This consequently lowers the cost to manufacture batteries. One of the things that professors will tell you at business school is that the power to bargain is one of the five key forces in a successful business. Tesla's entrance into mining is an important part of increasing Tesla's power to bargain. I understand that Tesla's Roadrunner battery is indeed going to take two or three years to reach high volume production. 
Yet the importance of Tesla's battery should not be focused on just ramping up the existing chemistry. Tesla's rapid rate of improvement with the use of new chemistries was a shocker. As I covered earlier, the range, charging times, and acceleration times have accelerated by a substantial amount. But that isn't where the true potential lies. As many of you know, Panasonic has estimated that the energy density of their batteries will increase 20% in the next 5 years. The Panasonic CEO was flaunting this dramatic rate of improvement as if increasing energy density by 4% per year was revolutionary. Tesla's new trajectory on the cost of batteries has completely obliterated Panasonic's goal. Wall Street may be short-sighted when it comes to the improvements, but as long-term investors, we should see this as a game-changing reversal in battery cost declines. However, cost declines go far beyond competing with other EV companies. These declines represent the end of the internal combustion engine. Imagine being able to purchase a $25,000 EV with 300 miles of range right now. This is what we are talking about long term. What this uh, enables uh, us to do is achieve a new trajectory in the reduction of, of uh, cell cost. And um, now, to be clear, it will take us probably a year to 18 months to start realizing these, uh, these advantages. And probably to fully realize the advantages, probably it's about three years or thereabouts. So, uh, you know, what tends to happen as companies get bigger is things tend to slow down. Um, well, actually, they're going to speed up. Overall, Tesla's battery day was not presented exuberantly. But if we take an objective look at what was announced and not how it was announced, we can clearly see how groundbreaking Tesla's battery day was. Also, keep this in mind, Tesla lies. But unlike some companies out there, in a positive manner. I'll tell you one thing uh, <laughs> that I found out. Tesla lies. You, you probably don't believe this, but Tesla lies. They understate continuously continuously. We've been doing testing and whatnot. And uh, they say, oh yeah, we're using this. And then we go over with our little spectrometer and go, beep. Oh no, it ain't. That is uh, super deluxe stuff. I mean, they, they understate a lot. Let me know what you think about Tesla's battery day. Do you believe that Tesla understated his accomplishments on battery day? Or are you disappointed at what was announced? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.